So I'm, I'm here again with uh, one short uh, uh, rep case report. I hope I'm not the only one who has difficult to treat patients. <laughs> Maybe, I hope it's not me and I, I shouldn't change my, my job. Uh, so uh, Joseph, Joseph, it's a, a six-year-old boy who was born with bilateral hypodysplasia. He had very small kidneys on ultrasound and uh, he was dialyzed at the age of one. He had a dialysis for more than one year. He was transplanted from a non-living donor uh, uh, at the age of three. He was not sensitized, so no induction, prednisone, mycophenolate, and tacrolimus. His kidney function was good uh, at the beginning. He just had clostridium difficile enteritis, and he was discharged from the hospital with creatinine of 44. Uh, three months after the kidney transplantation, he had an increase of creatinine. Uh, he had also BK vi viremia, uh, significant, uh, and BK vi vi viruria. Uh, we performed a renal biopsy and we found um, rejection cellular BANF1A and uh, we also do the immunohistochemic, immunohistochemic staining for BK virus and it was negative. We chose the strategy to reduce the immunosuppression at this time. We, we decided to change from tacrolimus to serolimus. Uh, then he had, as, uh, so the, uh, he had two attacks of pyelonephritis. And we found uh, on the video aerodynamic study there was an uh, infravesical obstruction. There was a there was a small wolf which was not detected in his pre-transplant evaluation urologic. So he he had this uh, he had this wolf resected uh, and, uh, endoscopically. Uh, two years after the kidney transplantation, his creatinine again increased uh, uh, to 80, 86. We performed uh, a DSA. Uh, evaluation we found in the second class DQ8 2000 uh, MFI uh, and uh, in class one there were no DSAs. We performed renal biopsy which showed against acute cellular rejection bump 1A uh, but also acute humoral rejection with uh, the peritubral capillaritis and uh, C4D positivity. There were also chronic rejection signs. We, so we decided to do six uh, plasma exchanges we gave the patient immunoglobulin, intravenous immunoglobulin, and we, we yes, increased the immunosuppression. We switched from serolimus back to tacrolimus. One month after the treatment, his creatinine was still in a higher level. His TAC levels were around five. Uh, his um, uh, and, uh, DSAs were still uh, up. They, dec they were only decreased mildly after the plasma exchanges. We, we, we performed another biopsy. They were, there was also, again, a cellular rejection, but only borderline, and there were no signs of humoral rejection. We gave him uh, three pulses of methylprednisolone. However, uh, he has suffered since this time frequent infections. The creatinine stayed in the, at the same level with the TAC levels of around five, and now it increased to 100 to 100, 120. Also, his proteinuria increased, and his uh, DSAs in the second class increased as well. They are more than 22,000 MFI. We, his virology is negative. And so we decided uh, to perform renal, renal biopsy. Uh, I'm afraid of the chronic uh, uh, humoral rejection. I don't understand why the previous biopsy, there were no signs of, of the uh, humoral rejection, but it, I don't know. So, uh, and I would like to ask, uh, because we have got uh, persistent uh, DSAs in the second class, if, the, if we found a uh, uh, humoral rejection, either acute or chronic, if we should, f f uh, how, how should we manage this patient uh, further? Thank you. Infection and rejection, the usual suspects. Um, Start the comment just that it's very difficult, and uh, in my next talk you'll hear nobody really knows what to do. But I agree, I think you do have to do repeated biopsies mm -hmm. to see what is actually going on in the graft. We don't have very good biomarkers at the moment, but your biomarkers that we do have are creatinine and antibodies, and they're both on the increase. We see this as well. In fact, sometimes you see difficulties in patients who've got ongoing active viremia with ongoing increasing antibody levels, and they are very, very tricky. 
I go back to your first biopsy when you had some rejection, but you SV40 was negative, and we've seen that with DK before when we've gone back and we've actually redone the staining and it's been mildly positive and whether it was an early part of BK wireless associated nephropathy that you just missed where, you know, depending on where the biopsy needle goes. But it's, they're very tricky cases. Mm -hmm. I think we all have the same nightmares. And your opinion on rituximab, because he, would you give it to him if he had uh, still uh, signs of humoral rejection? We do. We've got a low threshold for rituximab. We've actually got a bigger problem now that we can't really... Getting intravenous immunoglobulin is actually very difficult nationally in the UK because mm -hmm. of, uh, of the shortage. We don't, the supplies come from America, and they're really clamping down in all adult and paediatric hospitals. But yeah, we, we give rituximab. Or, uh, and repeat the IVIG I, I, as well, we, we, because we, we can afford it, so... <laughs> <laughs> We are rich. Well, it's, it's more the supplies that we've got a problem in the United Kingdom getting uh, from mm. America, but yes, we... It wouldn't cause him any harm if I repeated the course of IV. Well, you, you, there are side effects from... Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. We, see, we see patients that develop a tubular incisional nephritis with IVIG, mm. so it's not as benign as everybody says, but ideally, yes, we'd give mm -hmm. rituximab with IVIG. Thank you. I think the, the, the difficulty is, I think for uh, rituximab, the evidence that it's effective in either acute or chronic antibody-mediated rejection is very poor. Um, it is the, I know the creatinine is higher than it was, but um, are, do, do you think there's an acute process going on, or is this a chronic process? I suspect it to be chronic, because I saw also proteinuria climbing, uh, both of these markers, like, slowly increasing. Yeah, yeah so in, in that case, you know, I'd probably, personally, I would probably increase the TAC. Increase the TAC. The TAC is four to five, I think yeah. you said. Um, and if you can bring the MMF down a little bit but increase the TAC, that may suppress the DSA and keep your infections under control, but there's no easy answer. <laughs> Thanks.